Hello, good morning, and welcome to St. Bart's. Um, it's warm, as you may have heard. Um, this is an environmental Canada issue a, a heat alert um, uh, since Friday till Monday. So this is uh, our rehearsal of a uh, hotter weather summer that finally arrives. And um, I think it's also good timing that um, this will be the last Sunday um, that we will be worshiping at 11 o'clock, starting from next Sunday. And through the summer, we will switch our, we will experiment switching our worship time to 10 o'clock earlier, which is cooler and also it may work uh, better. We, we, we love to receive feedbacks from parishioners at the end of the summer how the new worship times uh, works for the St. Bart's communities, right? So remember to write a note and put, put a little reminder on your fridge. Worship is at 10 o'clock starting next Sunday. And also that this is the, uh, we, uh, the tech team is taking a very worthy break during the summer. So there will only be uh, 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 in-person worship only. So um, people at home, unfortunately, won't be able to join on Zoom. I am experimenting whether we could uh, live stream the worship on Facebook on the St. Bart's page. So actually, as we are speaking, we are um, uh, live streaming on St. Bart's uh, Facebook page. So this is just a test. And other than that, just lovely to see all your faces and the faces uh, at home as well. Uh, how many people have signed up to join us at home so far? About eight? That's okay, that's wonderful. So let us take a deep breath, breathe in the Holy Spirit, and let God's love and power fill our life as we prepare to worship this morning. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. You have the words of eternal life. Friends, let us 
then in body or spirit, as we sing our processional hymn, Come Down, O Love Divine. to this house of prayer. In this time and place, we meet in the presence of the living God, the living God who creates us and all that is. In this time and place, the risen Christ stands in our midst, the risen Christ who accompanies us and all people. In this time and place, God's Holy Spirit breathes in and through us. The Holy Spirit who transforms us and all life. In this time and place, together, one people of God, in the name of God, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, you set us free in Jesus Christ. Grant that we may live gracefully in this freedom without selfishness or arrogance, becoming servants through love to the freedom of the gospel for the sake of your reign. Amen. The first reading, a reading from Second Kings. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah, Elijah and Elijah were on their way from Gilgal. Eli Elijah said to Elisha, stay here for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. When it, then Elijah said to him, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them as they were both standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry land. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, you have asked a hard thing. Yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses and fire separated the two of them. And Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen but when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. He picked up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water, saying, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? When he had struck the water, the water was parted to the one side and to the other. And Elisha went over. Holy word, holy wisdom, thanks be to God. Psalm 77, 1 to 2, 11 to 20. Please read responsibly the bold verses. I will cry aloud to God. I will cry aloud and God will hear me. In the day of my trouble, I will remember your works, O Lord, and call to mind your wonders of old time. I will meditate on all your acts and ponder your mighty deeds. Your way, O oh God, is holy. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who works wonders and has declared your power among the peoples. By your strength, you have redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw you, O oh God. The waters saw you and trembled. The very depths were shaken. The clouds poured out water, the skies thundered, your arrows flashed to and fro. The sound of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings took up the world, the earth trembled and shook. Your way was in the sea and your paths in the great waters, yet your footsteps were not seen. You led your people by a flock by the land of Moses and Aaron. Glory to God, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit. Was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. 
Second reading is from Galatians chapter 5, verse 1 and verses 13 to 25. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand, for, stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole of the law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like this. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Holy Word, Holy Wisdom. May God be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. 
but they did not receive him because his face was set <clears throat> toward Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Let us pray. <clears throat> Jesu, Jesu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> 26 years ago, June 26th, Bishop Michael Ingham laid his hands on me and made me a deacon. Hallelujah! <laughs> and as Karen was playing earlier, Blessed Be the Name of the Lord, I thought, wow. <laughs> it's been 26 years of ups and downs in service and being a servant. <clears throat> and when my dear friend Marjorie Kellett <clears throat> from Christ Church Cathedral. She's been a stalwart there for years, a dear friend of mine. She was one of my examining chaplains and supported me all along the way in the journey to, uh, to ordination. And uh, Marjorie is still way up in her 90s going strong, <clears throat> a voice of, of strength in the diocese. She's one of those who we, women whom, of whom we say, like I say of my former rector, Barbara Clay, she's she who must be obeyed. <laughs> and that, uh, that's true. So today I recall, and Clarence just had an anniversary of ordination also. Clarence, what was that for you? 20. 20, 20 years as a priest. <laughs> deacon, 20 years as a deacon. 20 years as a deacon. It's wonderful. So I remember it clearly along with John Struthers, who's a retired archdeacon for deacons, Marjorie Sager, who now lives on Vancouver Island, Jeanette Scott, deacon in Powell River, and, uh, <clears throat> um, and uh, Jean yeah, Jeanette, and who was the fifth one? Oh, Liz Lindsay in North Vancouver, who's had a marvelous food ministry over the years. So <clears throat> I rejoice today in that and for the privilege of serving <clears throat> in the diaconate. I remember I preached a sermon once at a clergy conference where we were discussing the roles of different ministries. And I was asked to present a short message on the diaconate. So I chose as my text that passage from Isaiah 6, where uh, Isaiah talks about the vision in the temple and the threshold. And I says, it's the job of the priest to look inward and celebrate the mysteries of faith with us. And it's the job of the deacon to look outward from the church in service to the world. And uh, some things stand out to me in my ministry as a teacher and a vice principal, able to minister to families and to students all of those years and present that uh, Christian perspective when the Holy Spirit would lead in that direction. 
and it worked out quite well. And I remember one of the great uh, moments, uh, you know, as high school kids will, they'll smoke pot at school sometimes. And so I had three boys who were caught. One was the son of a pastor at Willingdon Mennonite Brethren Church. One was an Anglican, and one was a Roman Catholic, these three boys. So we treated it as a, as a spiritual occasion, and I brought the parents in, and I said, okay, part of the consequences of this is these boys are going to come to St. Lawrence Church in Coquitlam on this day, and I'm going to preach, and then we're going to go out for lunch afterwards and talk about it all. And uh, that was a high, that's what the diaconate is, is all about. And so, uh, and it's been a great weekend because, uh, as you may know, Randy and the Barnett boys <laughs> played at the market yesterday, and then they played at the Legion last night, and we went and, and danced and had a good time and with family and friends. My cousins were there. My niece was there, who is Randy's partner, and... Uh, uh, you know, uh, with the scripture, <clears throat> we can say the lines have fallen to us in pleasant places. And that, uh, that means a lot. And life is truly a whirlwind. And we've read a lot in the scriptures this morning, in the psalm, and in Ezekiel, and in the gospel. Uh, it's implied there's whirlwind stuff going on, there's change going on, there's activity. These are scriptures this morning with a lot of action and, and a lot of shifting of things. And we start with Mount Carmel in Israel, in Arabic known as Mount Mar Elias. And it's a sacred spot to Jews, Muslims, and Christians. Interesting place to be. There's a big church up there run by the Roman Catholics. And Pam and I visited this spot on our trip to Israel in 2018. It's a beautiful summit with a magnificent view. And there's a magnificent statue of the prophet Elijah up there. And so we could look out over the countryside and saw what Elijah saw in his earth-shattering ministry. <clears throat> And the name Elias and the name Elijah mean the Lord is my God. And there's a certain rockiness and, and solidity uh, about that name. And so Elijah, whose life was a whirlwind and who was taken out of this world in a whirlwind. His life was a whirlwind because he challenged the corrupt religious and political system of his day. His corrupt and religious system was dominated by the incompetent Ahab, king of Israel, self-serving and under the spell of his own Lady Macbeth, his queen Jezebel. And what a Lady Macbeth she was. And uh, another part of that tour we had, we stood on the place where Ahab's palace was. And the scripture describes how Jezebel saw the troops coming up for their comeuppance. And so we looked over that plain and I could imagine uh, the troops coming for Ahab and Jezebel. Anyway, in our story today, we see drought has struck the land. And Ahab becomes a desperate despot, as we've seen throughout history and see in the world today. The desperation of self-centered, selfish, uncaring despots who care only for their own power. He is so desperate that he joins his chief of staff, a man named Obadiah, in search for animal fodder. Things had become so dry, there wasn't enough food for the animals. Ah, but Obadiah, <clears throat> he was smart enough to have a secret agenda, as do many people who on the surface have to serve these despots, but he had the sense to honor the God-given voice of the prophets. And during this time of famine and drought, he personally took care of the prophets' material needs and made sure they were fed. 
And there was a strong voice of prophecy. There was the school of prophets we read about, this group of prophets. And there's Ezekiel. And when Obadiah and Elijah meet, Elijah instructs him to tell Ahab that he had arrived. Your nemesis is back in town, Ahab. <clears throat> that one who is going to stand up to your corruption and greed. Ahab makes his way toward Elijah because he fears him. This becomes a dramatic showdown, just as dramatic as those cowboys at the OK Corral. Boom. This was a key moment in the meeting of two opposing ways of life, of life and cultural and spiritual values clashing. Keeping on the present course, Elijah says, will create a spiral into social and spiritual disintegration and death. The other course, the one Elijah offers through the grace of God and the Spirit of God, brings hope of renewal and new life. A clear choice, if there ever was one. So Elijah backs the desperate Ahab into a corner. It's time for a reckoning. It is Ahab's January, 26, January 6, 2021 investigation, what we see going on in the States today. Ahab's comeuppance. <clears throat> and the battleground would be spiritual. And in fact, it's interesting to note some parallels as you watch the news to the January 6th investigation south of the border. One panel of commentators this past week spoke of the spiritual integrity, the strength of the Arizona Assistant Attorney General in charge of the elections there, who never once wavered when asked to break the election laws, he was sworn to uphold. I am sworn to uphold the Constitution of the United States of America, and I will not, and I would not, and I did not compromise that. And he was compared to the apparent hypocrisy of the former Vice President of the United States, who, as we know, claims religiosity, claims strong religious affiliation, but failed to stand up to the prophetic voices of the time, failed to stand up to the prophets of Baal until the last moment when the tide is turning. So, parallels all over the place to what we see in Elijah's life. So Elijah gives the people a choice. Stop dancing between two ideas or ways of life. Go on, choose life. Symbolically, Elijah then restores an ancient altar and the fire of truth call, that Elijah calls down puts an end to the corrupting political and religious bondage. The land again flourishes. The drought is past. The rain returns. What a whirlwind, what a time of change and upheaval. Ultimately, Elijah with his protege, Elisha, who will succeed him, makes a last round of the key areas of the school of prophets. Remember in the reading how Elijah said, okay, I've got to go to Jordan, I've got to go to Jericho, and I've got to go to Bethel. He's covering all of these spots. And suddenly, his mantle, which is his identity, his office as a prophet, falls onto Elisha, and Elisha is taken up in a windstorm, a whirlwind. Powerful symbolism for a man who changed the course of politics, society, and religion in his time. And now we can turn our scene to Jesus journeying to Jerusalem, just before his dramatic departure from this life. Again, like Elijah, he has been working on transforming all of life in the light of the inauguration of the kingdom of God. Now, the Jewish people have a tradition to this day in their Seder, in their remembrance meals, <coughs> called the Cup of Elijah. The Cup of Elijah plays a major role in the Jewish story. And in the Seder, it remains untouched, and there's a chair, a vacant chair, 
for Elijah to come. Because that cup represents redemption. Redemption coming back from death to life. And the presence of the cup and the empty chair for Elijah shows a physical reality that redemption is not some kind of abstract concept. It's real. Elijah heralds the hope of redemption. And for us followers of Jesus, that redemption is fulfilled in him. Who, for us, the cup of suffering was poured out. So Jesus, too, faced those religious and political authorities of his day and invited us all and all of humanity to follow a better way, a redemptive way. Going through Samaria, a place of disdain and rejection for the Jews, is no mistake as he heads for Jerusalem. It's the long way around. He could have taken a shorter route, but he went on out of his way into this foreign land, signaling for us that redemption is open to all. No barriers, no barriers at all. No doubt remembering how Elijah called down the fire of truth centuries earlier, the disciples want to call down fire from heaven and destroy these unheeding Samaritans. But this time, there will be no fiery vengeance. But the nonviolent moving of the Spirit of God um, among people, inviting them to follow. So, Jesus' invitation to follow me is one that without dramatic signs speaks directly to the heart and calls for a resetting of life's priorities. Part of these priorities is serving the Samaritans in our lives as Jesus opened the door of redemption to the Samaritans in his life. The Samaritans in our lives, who are they? Those who look, act, and may believe differently from us with whom we may violently disagree on various issues ah, and may be tempted to call down fire on. But, no, Jesus says, we don't call down fire, the fire of condemnation. We are called to speak the truth in love, to break down the barriers between us and them. The fruit of the Spirit described by Paul in Galatians 5 that we heard this morning is the order of the day. And that fruit of the Spirit that Paul describes as the freedom that we have in, in God, in life. I was reading this week how we can use that freedom to bind ourselves to others in lives of service, mutuality, and networking for the common good, or we can choose to bind that freedom to ourselves and look inward to our own selfish desires, quests for power, and wanting to be on top of the heap, so to speak. And Paul, he lists all those divisive things there in Ephesians 5, the things that divide us from one another and cause dissension and strife. And then he talks about the fruit of the Spirit. Now, Episcopal priest Mike Marsh has an interesting contemporary on those statements that we read in the Gospel. Uh, yes, I will follow you, Jesus, but first, but first let me do this, but first let me do that. He uses them to demonstrate that there are no conditions of love on the love of God embodied for us in Jesus. Now I want you to, to know what makes Marsh's statement so significant for us this morning. Father Mike Marsh is the rector of St. Philip's Episcopal Church in Uvalde, Texas. That's where he's been serving the site of the recent school massacre. And I'm sure that he's realized that his ministry has entered a new dimension, a Samaria, a foreign land, a foreign place that I'm sure he never expected to see. But he's been loving unconditionally 
And there's a series of sermons on that you can Google St. Philip's Episcopal in Uvalde, Texas, and he's been preaching on this tragedy and how to get through it and approaching it. So Jesus calls us, Father Mike says, quite prophetically in terms of what's happened in his life and the life of his community. He reminds us that but first is putting conditions on the love of God, but we can't do that. So this is what he says, yes, but I will follow the other. I will love the other. I will break down the barriers, but first let me go and see who the other is, whether she or he is deserving of love, whether I like him or her, or whether he agrees or she disagrees and is agreeable to me. Yeah, but if, if, but. Ah, I will open my door and welcome the stranger, but let's see who's knocking first. Let's see how different she or he is from me and what she or he wants and what I am risking. Ah, I will forgive another, but first, let me go and see if she or he has acknowledged his or her wrongdoing and is sorry for what they did and has promised to change. Putting conditions on. Ah, yes. I will give to and care for another, but first let me go and see why I should, what it will cost me, and what's in it for me. Those are the but firsts that stand in our way at times. And Mike Marsh says, there are no conditions, there are no but firsts. So from Elijah to Jesus to Paul's articulation of the fruit of the Spirit, God's purpose of redeeming the time is clear. The key is the kind of Christ-likeness that Paul calls us to in Galatians 5. It's a call to wholeness and extending wholeness to others. There is no room for but first living. Amen. My friends, please stand in body or in spirit as we affirm our faith together in these following words. God for us, we call your Father together. God alongside us, we call you Jesus. God within us, we call you Holy Spirit. 
You are the eternal mystery that enables, enfolds, and enlivens all things, even us and even me. Every name falls short of your goodness and greatness. We can only see who you are in what is. We ask for such perfect seeing, and it is in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. Amen. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord, to the Lord saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we thank you for the patience you have shown to your people. Truly, it is written, the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. Hear our prayer, Heavenly Father, as we repent our own lack of patience with one another and help us to follow the model you and your son Jesus have set for us. Lord, hear our prayer. Compassionate and loving God, you created a beautiful world for us to share. Give us the desire to live simply so that our lives show your generosity. You made us responsible for the earth. Guide us so that we may live lightly upon this planet, healing where it has been damaged by thoughtlessness and greed. Help us to find strength through our faith that we may not be led astray by things of the world or men of this world. Lord, hear our prayer. Most generous creator, we give thanks to you that in your love, you have filled the earth with beauty and wondrous diversity. We pray that the eyes of people of all nations may be open and filled with wonder at all the glorious life that surrounds them. And that in rejoicing in your whole creation, all may learn to serve you with gladness for the sake of him through whom all things were made, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Great creator, we give thanks for the abundance of your blessings. As you have shared the abundance of creation with us, guide the hearts of our greater community to share with those who suffer from want and hopelessness. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray now for the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of all who worship in whatever fashion and for the unity of all. We pray your spirit may be with all in danger, particularly for the first responders, the police, firefighters, paramedics, doctors and nurses, and members of the armed forces. We pray for those who are far from home, for prisoners, exiles, victims of oppression. May they find strength and faith and hope in Christ's teachings. We pray for all those in positions of authority at every level, both secular and religious, that they may be guided to serve your people in wisdom and charity. We give thanks and pray your spirit be upon Elizabeth, our queen, defender of our faith, and upon our primate, Archbishop Linda, our Bishop John, our priest in charge, Stephen, our assistant priest, Clarence, recently celebrating his 10th anniversary of ordination into the priesthood, and our deacon, Steve, especially as he celebrates his 26th anniversary of ordination. Lord, hear our prayer. Joining with our partners in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for Bishop Brent Alawas, the clergy and people of the Episcopal Diocese of Northern Philippines, and our partner parish of St. Bernard. In our own diocese, we pray for the clergy and people of St. David, St. Paul's, Powell River, and the legal officers of the Diocese of New Westminster. In our Sunshine Coast, faith community, we give thanks for and ask God's blessing upon all who seek understanding of him. This week, we remember the clergy and people of Holy Family Roman Catholic Church and St. Mary's Roman Catholic Church. We pray God's care and strength be with all in our St. Mark's congregation, remembering in particular this week, Judy, Elliot and Catherine, Alana, and Helen. 
We pray especially for those who are facing particular health or spiritual challenges. Sheila, Rosemary, Joan, Sarah, Rita, Kay, Willa, Marilyn M, Reverend Esther, Joan R, Julie, Pat, Margot T, and Helen. We pray for physical and spiritual strength for all those in care at Christensen, Totem, Greencourt, Shorncliffe, and Seashell Hospital, and also for all those who provide care in these facilities. We pray for your healing strength to be poured out on all who are suffering from and recovering from COVID and all their caregivers. We pray for those who are mourning loss. And this week we pray we give thanks for the life of Joyce Helen Makeham, whose spirit now resides with you in the company of the angels and saints, and ask comfort for her daughter, Helen, and for all her family and friends in their grief. Rest eternal grant unto Joyce, and may light perpetual shine upon her. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of light, you have brought us in safety to this new day, for which we give you thanks and praise. Let Christ, the son of righteousness, shine forever in our hearts and draw us to that light where you live in radiant glory. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast enough and infinite in mercy. She welcomes sinners and invites them to her table. Let us confess our sins' confidence in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us greet each other with a sign of Christ's peace. And to people at home, Peace of Christ be with you all. Our offertory hymn will be Lord of All Hopefulness, hymn 506 in the hymn book.
Let us pray. God of wisdom, receive all we offer you this day. Enrich our lives with the gift of your Spirit, that we may follow the way of our Lord Jesus Christ and serve one another in freedom. We ask this in his name. Amen. May God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to God our Creator. It is right. It is indeed right that we should praise you, gracious God, for you created all things. You formed us in your own image. Male and female, you created us. When we turned away from you in sin, you did not cease to care for us, but opened the path of salvation for all people. You make a covenant with Israel, and through your servants Abraham and Sarah, gave the promise of a blessing to all nations. Through Moses, you led your people from bondage into freedom. Through the prophet, you renewed your promise of salvation. Therefore, with them and with all your saints who have served you in every age, we give thanks and raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name, singing... Holy, holy. Holy God, source of life and goodness, all creation rightly gives you praise. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He healed the sick and ate and drank with outcasts and sinners, he opened the eyes of the blind and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and to those in need. In all things, he fulfilled your gracious will. On the night he freely gave himself to death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, his perfect sacrifice destroyed the power of sin and death. By raising him to life, you give us life forevermore. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Recalling his death, proclaiming his resurrection, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you, Father, this bread and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that all who eat and drink at this table may be one body and one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ, 
with Christ and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. My friends, the gift of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
on the last page of your order of service, let us pray. God of power, we are nourished by the riches of your grace. Raise us to new life in your Son, Jesus Christ, and fit us for his eternal kingdom, that all the world may call him Lord. We ask this in his name. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keeps your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remains with you always. Amen. Our recessional hymn is, Will You Come and Follow Me? Hymn 430. Thanks be to God.
Thank you, Karen.